Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to this video. We're going to be talking about memoization. And yeah, I'm probably saying it wrong, but I don't care. And what is this exactly? Well, using the, the concepts we talked about in the previous video, functions can be treated as any other object. So we can actually attach a property to a function to basically keep a memory of all the computed values. When would you want to do something like this? Well, if you have some kind of algorithm or something you're trying to calculate that's very computationally expensive and you don't want to have to repeat over and over calculating the same thing, you can, you can use memoization to your benefit by storing a record of what the result will be. So this might be common in, say for example, if you want to calculate the factorial for a bunch of numbers. Well, if you calculate the factorial for some number such as 500 that can take a lot of computational effort and if you have to do that numerous times rather than repeating it You could just look up the value and boom you're done So we're going to be talking about that concept here using power function So basically we're going to calculate powers and we're going to store those Using the the memoization technique by basically adding a property to this function Are you looking for a JavaScript web development boot camp? What about an iOS boot camp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So, if you're in a language where you can't add properties, you can certainly use a different variable or a different data structure, but we're gonna take advantage of the capabilities of JavaScript. So what is this going to look like? Well, before we get into the actual solution to do this, let's start with a very simple example where all we're going to do is we're going to output all of the things we've calculated with this function, all of the results. So to do something like this, we might create a property. So we'll just say pow dot calculated and we're going to make this an array and now what we're going to do is after we calculate some value we're going to append to this array by saying pow.calculated.push and then just pass in that value the total so let's go through an example of this and we're also going to output it so we'll say console.log and we're going to log pow.calculated so we can just get a, a regular update of what the, the value of pow.calculated is. Then outside of this function, what we're going to do is we're going to call it, so let's say pow33, and this is going to return the value, so unless we're doing something with it, it's not gonna be very useful. So we might wanna console log it or we might wanna pass it into another function. But since we're doing this console log here, you, you can still see some output, so I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So we can do two examples of this. Do a refresh. The first time, 27 was calculated, and it was pushed onto the array. Then the next time, the 27 was calculated again for this one, and it was pushed onto that array. So that is basically a way to maintain state between numerous function calls. The, the state of this calculated persisted after the first function call, and it was appended to during the second function call. So as we do more and more examples, you'll see that different things show up in here. Let's do the fourth power. All right, do a refresh, and you can see it just grows and grows and grows. Now, obviously this is not helping anything because we're not looking up into this calculated array to see if a value has already been calculated. We're just adding to the array and then just doing the calculations again each time. So this, this algorithm right here is going to be executed every single time. In order to bypass this algorithm to save computational effort, we need a way to basically look up to see if a value has already been calculated. And when would you want to do this? Well, if this algorithm was very time consuming, in this case, it's not so bad. Calculating the power isn't, isn't that big of a deal. But if we're working with really large numbers or some more complicated algorithm, we definitely want to consider a shortcut. Now, in order to look this up in some array or object, we need basically a key value pair system. So the key is going to be the input, and then the value is going to be what the output would be. So right now, over in the arrays, we're just storing the result, but there's no way for us to look up 
what input got us that result. So it's not really helping us any. So in order to basically have that key value pair system, we can use some data structure. We're going to use an object because an object is just key value pairs. So we're gonna change this to an object by switching it to curly braces. Now for the actual key, you can use whatever mechanism you can think of to basically have a unique way of describing the input. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use strings. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a variable in here and we'll say let string version and we'll assign it the value x plus, that's the first parameter, and then we'll just have the uh, caret symbol to represent raising it to the power plus y. And just to see this, let's console log string version and let me get some more room here. And then we'll output string version here. So now when we run this, um, this, this uh, push is no longer going to work because we're working with an object. So let's just comment that out, do a refresh. You can see what these string versions are. 3 to the 3rd, 3 to the 3rd, 10 to the 4th, and 10 to the 3rd. So we can use those for the keys, and then we can have the actual end result as the, the value. So to do that, instead of using this push technique, what we're going to do is we're going to say pow.calculated, and you can actually use array indexing like syntax and say string version. So that's going to be the key, and then we're going to assign it the value, which is going to be total. Now when we do a refresh, let's look at what's going on here. So the first time we pass in 3 to the 3rd power, and then 3 to the 3rd power has the value 27. When we do it again, that key already exists, so it's replaced. Then when you do 10 to the 4th, we get a new one in there, and then 10 to the 3rd, we get another new one in there. So now what we need to do is instead of replacing the values, we actually need to check to see if that value already exists. So to do that, before the algorithm, we can do a conditional. Say if string version in pow.calculated, that'll search for that key. And if it exists, what are we gonna do? We're just going to return the value. So we return pow.calculated, and then inside of the square brackets, we put the key we're looking for. So we say string version, and this is going to refer to the value. And just for fun, we'll do a console log, and we'll say found. So now let's do a refresh. The first time it's inputted, the second time it says found, and it no longer does this console log down here. And then it goes on to the next ones where, where each time it's added. So to show this even clearer, we'll do a console log down here. And I know console logging everywhere is not the best way to do this, but <laughs> it's nice and easy to, to visualize. So what we'll do is we'll just say calculating. So either it's going to return the value already or it's going to do the calculations. Now when we do a refresh, every time it says calculating, it's going through that algorithm again. Anytime we have a repeating use, it's going to uh, save us some time by not recalculating it. Do a refresh here, now we have 3 to the 3rd, 3 to the 3rd, 10 to the 4th, 10 to the 4th. You can see the first time it's calculating, second time it's found. Same thing, calculating, found. So that is an introduction to memoization and how we can optimize an algorithm by storing key value pairs of inputs and outputs and referencing those to see if we've already done that calculation. Again, this string here, I just totally made up that convention. If you have some better way of representing the input and the output, go for it. I'm sure you can think of something awesome. So that's all I got for you guys in this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about default and rest parameters. So that's going to be pretty cool. Please be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.